Hey, welcome to another installment of Catching Up. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Chris. And this week we're going to be talking to John McRae about his new image comic series, Dead Rabbit, out in comic book stores everywhere in Comixology on Wednesday, October 3rd. In the outro, Chris sees Ocean's 8. We talk about the possibility of Henry Cavill leaving Superman um, and our favorite moments with him. And I talk about finally actually playing the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man. Here's a hint. It didn't take me four months to play a new video game this time. Shit. But you know what? Before we get into that, <laughs> let's talk to John. And coming back on the show, we have John McRae. His new comic book series, Dead Rabbit, is out in comic book stores everywhere and on Comixology on Wednesday, October 3rd. John, thanks again for coming on the show. Uh, pleasure, Sam. Uh, thanks for having me. And sorry, Jerry couldn't make it. Oh, uh, he's always, you know, those Hollywood types, always so busy. <laughs> um, oh, absolutely. I don't know if you remember, absolutely. but the... the to go to. Yeah, the, I don't know if you remember. The first time you were on was like two years ago when we were talking uh, Mythic with Phil Hester. You know, I do vaguely recall it. Um, I um, apologize. My brain is like sieve these days, so <laughs> I can barely remember what I had for tea. And that was, uh, you know, five or ten minutes ago. So I apologize for that. <laughs> it's quite all right. It's quite all right. So how, how did this book, how did, how did Dead Rabbit come about? Well, um, <clears throat> I uh, was at a comic convention in Dublin run by the, um, the guys at the Big Bang comic shop. Mm-hmm. And I knew Jerry was over for the convention. And honestly, uh, I'd liked Jerry's work for a long time. And I thought, you know, I think I'll just schmooze this guy and see what's going on. Um, Fortunately, Jerry was quite pleased to see me, big fan of my work as well. So we just chatted over a beer and uh, decided we wanted to work together. We got on well. And uh, this was maybe five years ago. So we've been talking about it ever since. And it's just now that our perspective schedules have come together um jerry had a few ideas that he laid out for me and presented to me but the dead rabbit one was the one that really caught my attention the one that i really wanted to do and i guess it's been a while since i've done something in the vein of hitman really and i think i wanted to sort of go back to that sort of area again um jerry has is you know has does great work with the crime, and uh, and that was uh, that so it made a perfect sense. Was it kind of refreshing because you had just done you know you've done All Star Section Eight, you've done Mythic, which is you know like kind of like supernatural. I was going to say supernatural Ghostbusters, but I guess Ghostbusters was supernatural to begin with. But you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. True enough. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, was it good kind of using these visual muscles again? Say that again, sir, Sam? Was it really refreshing to use these like visual storytelling muscle- muscles again in, in a more crime, grounded, gritty story? Yes, I'm, I'm a big film noir fan anyway. Um, and with this story, it's <clears throat> I've, I've decided just to push, push that more so than I had before, um, really sort of pumping up the contrast on it and uh, dumping in lots and lots of heavy blacks and things like that and just having fun with the whole with that whole genre. Um, and Jerry's, you know, writing a great story. The, the characters are very, very relatable and, uh, and grounded in a, a very, uh, a, re- a really nice sort of a love story, really. Martin and his wife, Megan, are, you know, very much in love. And the whole, the problem that brings a dead rabbit out of retirement revolves around that that love and uh, his devotion to her. So, So it's got a good heart and soul, but of course it is also a very noirish, gritty, bloody, and funny uh, story as well. So Jerry's pushing all my buttons there, you know, because the humor aspect of things is, of course, kind of something that I always have. If it wasn't there when it, the story was written, I kind of slide it in if I possibly can. But working with Garth, you know, I mean, a lot of his stories are, you know, the, the violence has a sort of um, an irony and a humor to it as well. So, so yes, it's nice to be back in that area again. You were mentioning, uh, you know, the the humor stuff, and 
I mean, without going into details for our listeners at home, the first time we see Martin is like that, you know, had me like at least out of the out of costume, that had me laughing my ass off, right? <laughs> Complete <laughs> costume. Yes. Um yeah, yeah. Jerry really wanted to make splash, uh, no pun intended, with the with our with our opening you know, scene and uh, our introduction to the character. Um, and of course, he wanted to introduce him in a way that possibly no other, I guess, masked hero vigilante has ever been introduced before. Um, I think he succeeded pretty well on that. Um, and it was at one of those sort of shots where you're drawing it and you're going, how far do I take this? You know, um, do uh, yeah, and if you haven't seen it and then you do see it, you'll understand what I'm talking about, dear readers. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a balance, trying to get a balance right between it being humorous and 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 slightly shocking, um, and not pushing it too far where it just became sort of revolting, perhaps. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't think I really want to set out to revolt anybody in that particular way in this story. Uh, yeah, it's it's um to put it to put it more politely, it's very and very literally, it's very lavatorial, right? Sure, sure, <laughs> yes. And, and I'm no stranger to that sort of arena, but you know, <laughs> in comics, so, and um, but yeah, it, it's the balance of introducing. I mean, you want the story to be taken seriously as well, and and you don't want to make your character. No one drag him too far down so that people can't take him, you know, completely. You know, people don't just snigger when they look at him. Um, <laughs> you know, throughout the rest of the story, just flashing back to that. So there was a kind of, yeah, just a, there was a certain point where I had to just sort of say, oh, I can't show any more than this, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, it was kind of a hard balance to get on that, that opening splash page. Well, you had mentioned, I mean, that balance exists in all of your work, John. You, there was that really, I mean, the moment, uh, if there's any one moment that everyone cites from Hitman, it's that heart-to-heart with Superman, and you punctuate it with a staccato with, you know, a dude getting his head blown off. And, then, you know, you see that in, like, all of your work, your work with Garth on The Punisher. You see that in, in Mythic with these, like, very, like, Godzilla-sized monsters and everything. Like, there that... That that, if anything, you've always that balance is always there. Trying to strike that, I mean, that's that's what that's the thing that makes Section Eight live and breathe. Is that something that you always need that element of humor in whatever you work to kind of that little punchline, sometimes literally, to, uh, I, to I, yeah, yeah, I see, yeah, I believe so. I think um, as a reader growing up reading humor comics, a lot of British humor comics. Um, a lot of comics in the UK were humor comics, uh, kids' humor comics, and I read a whole ton of those growing up. And they were sort of zany, daft, and slightly laboratorial, possibly. And then uh, with 2000 AD as well, which has always been a gritty comic, but has always had this edge of very violent humor threaded throughout it. And then on this comics like Viz magazine, which is a, a very... <laughs> um, very rude and uh, amusing uh, British publication, not to be confused with the Viz, the manga publishers. Um, so I think growing up reading all of those sorts of different influences has made it so that I think most British artists do sort of tend to put a lot of that into their work. Um I mean, especially um, myself, definitely. I, I can't seem to help myself, really. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's there even with story, serious stories I do. I just can't help but put daft crap in the background or just try to make it humorous in some way, small way, just to counterbalance the sort of maybe grimness of what it might be showing otherwise. Well, I remember, you know, you mentioned 2000 AD. It's sure. really, it tends to be very grim now but there was that period like in the 70s and 80s where even like sour push judge dread would still have like with walter the robot would have these really comedic moments out of nowhere 
Yeah, I, I, I missed that to a large degree about 2000, I think. Um, that, that, that was it. I mean, 2080 was absurd as well as grim and gritty i mean some of the characters were absurd the, the villains from dredge universe and and the the denizens of mega city one were just insane absurd and and very funny and i think too about you know i don't read the 2000 as much as i used to but that's possibly part of the reason is that a lot of that humor it seems to me seems to have been sort of pulled away from and dread to, and seems to be a lot more serious now, a lot more just brutal and grim um, without the sort of, uh, without the sort of background of, of that humour. And I, I, a guy like Al Ewing though, when he writes, Al comes from 2000 and, um, you know, I don't want to discredit everyone. <laughs> In fact, I shouldn't be discrediting anyone. But um, somebody like Al Ewing really still understands that counterbalance between the humour and the violence. And uh, if anybody has not read Zom Zombie, Zombie um, by Al, uh, I would recommend they do so. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, that's, um, it, it was uh, done with Henry Flint and about a, I know it's an incredibly uh, funny story that he did. And of course, Al continues that. And I've worked with Al on a number of things and they've always been... Uh, pretty hilarious, along with the sort of violent and um, sort of as well as great story. And Joe, Joe Al's work a lot. Well, speaking of collaboration, you've got Mike Spicer on uh, on colors with this. Um, who who mm. you, I believe you've worked with before. What is, what is yeah, your, yeah yeah? How would you say your yeah. uh, partnership is with with this particular story? Oh, it's more of the same, really. I mean, I just step back and let Mike do. What he does. I mean, I had a few hints and suggestions to start with, um, but for the most part, it's just Mike's show as far as the colors go. Um, we, we work really well together. Mike is extremely good at what he does, and of course, he's being snapped up by all the big boys now. So I'm just hoping that you know he doesn't forget us little folk and, and clear off and just leave me in the dust. Uh, so. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> that's one of the risks you take with these guys. You know, you give them, the, give them a break, and then the next thing you know, they're sort of like, see ya, <laughs> I'm off to pass who's new, and well, we'll all get paid better. <laughs> nah, Mike's awesome. Cool. Oh, please, don't believe me, <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did you guys, uh, this may be the most util. well, I guess the characters in Hitman were very, like, very down to earth design too, but how did you come up with the design for Dead Rabbit? Well, <clears throat> again, yeah, well, some of the characters in Hitman were down to earth, but then you had Section Eight and such like. But so um, it, it, it was a it was a bit of a, a an unlevel playing field that one. Um, with 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 the uh, Dead Rabbit design, Jerry wanted a guy in a suit, you know, and with a with a mask, a very thin mask, and a flat cap. The flat cap aspect of it, I was a bit unsure about when he first suggested it. I sort of thought, that's a weird thing to put on a, on a super guy, especially since our story is set slightly in the future. But, of course, he does sort of uh, talk about the fact that he is related to one of the gangs of original gangs in New York, an Irish gang. I mean, the story set in Boston. He's Boston Irish. Um, and he and, and he talks about being related to one of the guys from the original gangs in New York, the, the Dead Rabbits, hence the name. And so the flat cap was because of that. Um, and the idea behind it was basically if he steps out of the bank after having robbed it or what have you, and it's just a simple thing to pull off that can be stashed easily, and then he becomes just ordinary Martin Dobbs, um, who nobody would have look at twice. So that was that's what Jerry gave me, and I went away and just I sort of threw all the elements at it that I thought that it required, um, overdid it, and then sort of chiseled away at it and took out all the stuff that I 
you know, just, you know, made a block and then chiseled back until I had this bare essentials, really, um, which came down to just the little cross eyes, the hat and the gloves, which I nicked from Will Eisner's octopus character. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm a big Eisner fan and I'm, I'm not too not ashamed to admit that I stole those gloves. I love those gloves, those octopus gloves. So I stole those, you know, point blank from him. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mr. E, but um, so yeah, that 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 was how it came about. Uh, I, I think the the eyes and the hat make for a really good silhouette. You know, you put put the guy in the sharp suit with that hat, and then you can, and silhouette that all with the two red eyes, just sort of glowing out at you. Obviously, they don't really glow, but of course, you push that sort of stuff in the comic um, to make them. Sort of to make him look eerie, give him a, a sort of a menacing look, and it seems to work quite nicely. Oh, yeah, the contrast there. The um, you were mentioning the dead rabbits. If now, forgive my Gaelic, both in terms of potential mispronunciation and just misinterpretation. But isn't dead rabbit Gaelic for man to be feared or something to that extent? No, geez, no, you are, you'll have to, Jerry, I'm going to pass that one over to you. Oh, God, he's not here. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to need somebody a might more educated than me, like your good self, Sam, it seems. So uh, I think you've just answered that question to yourself. I, I, I never did Gaelic, and so I'm a, a bit ignorant of that one, actually. I do apologize. I can only say that I've o- I've only ever been to Dublin once, and nobody called me a dead rabbit, so I don't. So I'm apparently like okay over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was either a bit like a compliment or an insult. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you were mentioning you were mentioning Eisner, and you were mentioning noir. Um, I guess like hmm. yeah, the spirit is like perhaps what the qu- it's either him or the shadow is like the quintessential comic book noir character. Sure. Yeah. Well, I I I grew up reading, reading the spirit and um, and not the shadow. So I I've since read shadow stories. You know, since I became an adult, but I didn't read any before, except maybe uh, Chapin's Shadow and Bill Sinkovich's, uh those two stories that DC did later. But uh, I don't. I didn't see any of the earlier stuff. Uh, none of the pulp stuff, or none of maybe, the, and not the Kaluza stuff, or anything like that. Um, before I became an adult, so it was really Eisner for me. Um, when I was young, I remember my I, I stumbled across an old one of the old Warren uh, reprints, uh, the big magazine format ones. When I was quite young in a second-hand shop, and was completely smitten with Eisner at, at that point. Um, and the spirit, especially. So yeah, it's it's he is what was uh, and remains a genius, um, and nobody can tell a story or evoke mood the way Eisner can. And uh, yeah, to you know, he's a huge influence on me. And part of his inking style, though he does it all with brush, I do it with brush pen. That that sort of style. It's partly influenced my influence, and that was partly from sort of 30s illustrators, um, but also Eisner as well, of course. Uh, just that sort of the way he laid down blacks with a brush, but, uh, and the way I'm sort of badly imitating it now. <laughs> you've you've uh, modernized it. You have you have brought it brought yeah. forth it into the right, 21st right century. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, modernized it. Ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess everything that's modernized is ruined, John. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, think, uh, you got, I agree with you there. So, wh- okay, let's work a little more abstractly. What is it about both noir and kind of these pulpy, crime-infused stories that has, that that kind of attracts you as an artist, as a storyteller? Well, graphically, it's a hell of a lot more interesting to work in that sort of way than I think just trying to sort of be more realistic, uh, as it were. You know, you think you think a lot more in shapes and forms and negative space, um, which is makes it a lot more fun to play with than just trying to represent what's really there and just be sort of relatively sort of dull about it. I, I, I 
like I said before, it's about pushing that uh, those big heavy blacks and the contrast and making things pop and but but also bringing a lot of mood and solemnness to it. Um, plus, it also makes life a whole lot easier to draw sometimes because when you can't be bothered drawing something, you just slap a big load of black over the top of it and you stick rise in and bogs your uncle. I mean, a lot of the time, I think Toth was probably thought along those lines as well. I mean, not that I could compare myself to somebody like Toth ever, but, you know, you would see him... Uh, you look at a panel he done and there's a, nothing but a silhouette and a couple of shapes in the background and, the, and it tells the story perfectly but he certainly didn't have to draw quite so much <laughs> doing that and um, possibly handy for deadlines I know it saved my life a couple of times working in that <laughs> so it's, it's, there's a utilitarian purpose to it all okay, well, well put that man yes exactly <laughs> but, <I> mean, <laughs> exactly but but even as a fan, like what was it? A f- what was it about noir? Like what is it about Bogart films or, or or any of that stuff from that era that that you know just kind of just attracted you in the first place? Um, well, I guess it's I guess it's the, the hard boiled grittiness of it. You know, uh, our our hero in Dead Rabbit um, is a tough sod so he is I mean he can he's a pretty handy in a fight and he can sort of kick the crap out of a bunch of guys and walk away and so that's very appealing to uh, somebody who couldn't fight their way out of a wet paper bag like my good self um, so you know just from that manly man type perspective it's very appealing um, even though of course our hero is of course a, a soppy old love love addicted sort of character as well um, you know he is a tough nut and uh, you know all those noir characters if you look at sort of Bogart or Mike Hammer or whomever <laughs> you know they're all ass kickers and uh, and uh, so yeah that aspect of things is very very appealing as well um, and I, but, but with, for me as an artist it's the, the visual aspect of it that really appeals you know there's there's nothing like those big slabs of solid black and sort of counterpointed against sort of uh, you know, your spots of light and, and just sort of making everything so moody and just, dare I say it, cool looking. You know, I, I, I think it just really works as a, a storytelling device much more. Well, it kind of gives the idea that the characters are trying to trying to survive and fight against the darkness that surrounds them to put on my brainy cap. Oh, God, you're going to get a little bad physical and all on me. Jeez, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't you say what you think and I'll nod and agree with (laughs) you. I should should work on my Jerry Duggan impression. Then they'll never know. (laughs) They never will. Never will. Not even Jerry. He'll just probably wake up next morning sort of slightly hung over and go, did I actually do that podcast? <laughs> yes. Are you guys going to be at uh, New York in a couple of weeks? We are. We are. We're doing, um, yeah, Jerry's, Jerry uh, and I are doing a signing at Midtown Comics on Thursday. Uh, and then we're doing New York Comic Con for the full four days. And I believe Jerry's doing a couple of other spots around the U- U.S., I think he's signing a couple of other shops here and there. And then he comes over to the U.K. and we do sign at Forbidden Planet um, towards the end of the month. And then we go to the Big Bang, which I was talking about earlier. And we sign there on a Wednesday, I believe. And then we are go to Derry in uh, Northern Ireland for the Derry Comics Fest, which is a, a great festival, a great show. Um, and... Uh, we're going to sign there all weekend and possibly have a drink too. I'm not <laughs> sure, but we might have time to sneak one in somewhere upon that, you know, that giant tour. I believe Jerry's not actually going to be at home at any point for an entire month because he's touring about so much like the sort of superstar he is. Jeez. But uh, yeah, I know. Well, it's, it's quite the whole. Uh, just hopping around from show to show like that. Yeah. I'm sort of jealous, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to worry about the kids or anything. 
Oh, uh, well, yeah. You know, you know, I'm sort of jealous, but also, you know, being a big sap, I'd probably miss him, too. Of course. Of course. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll be at New York myself, so if you ge- gentlemen okay. want to get a pint, I will, I will be around. Yeah, yeah, that sounds very cool. So I'm just just find us at the uh, we'll be in Artisali at the Image, uh, the in the Image area at Artisali. I think I'm on table A twenty eight or something like that. Um, you know, I should really check these things before I do a podcast. But I can actually, say precisely where I am and when I am, but whatever. Anyway, so um, so yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. Just stop by the table, say, introduce yourself. We'll go see see what we can do. Um, as far as a pint, I'll probably just have a gin and tonic myself. So I'm not the hard drinker I used to be. You know, I can't handle I can't handle beer anymore. Really, it's you just, know, uh, I, it's, I'm buddies with Declan Shalvey, and he only drinks cider. So every time I'm like, "Hey, pint of Guinness," he's like, uh, I'll, "I'll stick with the Magners," and I'm like, "Okay, all right." <laughs> that's, oh, that, that's that's a kid's drink. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez, that's what you—that's what you learn to drink on cider. Oh, disgusting! Christ! I'll let yeah, that know. Geez, <laughs> I like that one too. You know, Jesus, grow up. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to get all sophisticated like me with my G and Ts. Oh yes, very distinguished. Very distinguished. <laughs> so, absolutely. John, I'll slide on. Yeah, of course. <laughs> The um, I don't know if you remember, but something we ask everybody that comes on our fine program, uh, mm-hmm. what are you currently geeking out over? Ah, uh, um, well, to tell you the honest God truth, and this is going to sound a little bit like I'm uh, kissing arse here, but uh, I only really ever read image books anymore. Um, I don't really find much to interest me in the big two particularly much. Uh, I am still reading... Um, Miss Marvel, mm-hmm. uh, Malakan stories. I'm reading those uh, out of Marvel. Um, so anything I'm reading from DC, uh, yeah, Batman. Yeah, I suppose I'm still reading Batman. Um, uh, the, the Tom King and um, God, what's his name? He draws Batman at the moment. He's bloody amazing. Oh God, what's his name? Lee oh, Lee Weeks, the very man, yes. He's unbelievable. One artist. Jeez, does my head in. But there are so many good artists about at the moment, it's just depressing. I read a lot of Rick Remainder stuff, um, Black Science, Deadly Class. I haven't got the Seven Day Eternity yet, I must admit. And Lou is amazing. Um, let me see what else am I reading from Image. Uh, God almighty. Uh, oh, I suppose. <laughs> Brian K. Bourne and Fiona Staples on uh, what you might call Saga. Um, yep, reading that. I did read The Walking Dead for a while, but it's just a unrelentingly grim for my taste. Yeah. Can't, uh, I always feel yeah. like I need a Prozac after I watch a couple episodes of that. Yeah, well, I've never watched the TV show. No, and I've never watched that. No, I, 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 I can't stand to watch anything violent on telly. It just it, uh, it makes me want to throw up. Yeah, I used to enjoy horror movies and all that, but no. He, I, a while ago, got when Garth started writing Crossed, he sent me the first four issues of it, and I got to the end of the first issue and then just closed the books and took them down to my local comic shop and traded them in because I, <laughs> I just couldn't handle them at all. I, I, I read comics to be entertained, not to be chilled to my very core, you know. So that was that. So, yeah, I can't hack that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, jeez, I can't remember. You know, I, I hate being put in the spot about stuff like that because you can never bloody remember. I have been rereading uh, some Love and Rockets, uh, yeah, the Hernandez brothers, uh, recently, and I've been rereading my Ditko Spider Man's, I suppose, again. Yeah, you know, since Ditko died, I've been plowing away through those again, plus a lot of other Ditko stuff because um, he's my favorite artist ever. So he is, but. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, I can, as fast as a present stuff, you know, Miss Marvel, the remainder stuff, good God, that's about it at the moment, maybe, I, I remember can't think enough now. I remember the last time you were on, uh, Captain America <laughs> Civil War had just come out, and you were geeking out hard over the uh, Giant Man sequence in the airport. 
Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I still, I still watch that and annoy my kids immensely by using, uh, saying that bloody line that Ant Man says every time. You know, has anybody got any orange slices? <laughs> like, that line. Every time it, my kids just say, every time he says that, you burst out laughing, and it annoys the hell out of his dad. Could you stop laughing at that line? But yeah, I can't help myself. So yeah, I love that. That's it's great. Did yeah, you uh, yeah. did you enjoy Infinity War? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, my my youngest turned around to me at the end of the movie and said, "Dad, your jaw was just hanging down the entire way through that movie." So, admittedly, you know, there's there's faults with it, but I don't care. It was just amazing. It had all those big fight scenes that were just straight out of your favorite multi part crossover comic. You know that sequence where they've all got Thanos. Strap, you know, with the when they're trying to pull the Infinity Gauntlet off him. Mm-hmm. What an amazing sequence! And Doctor Strange was kick ass. Yeah, I mean, so. if, we're, if we're talking Ditko, that's like some straight yeah. up Ditko stuff with with yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch's Strange. Yeah, yeah, no, he does a great job. He really does. Yeah, he's terrific. I mean, I think, I think you know, the first Doctor Strange movie was fine and all, uh, but that it just didn't quite get me the way I wanted it to but now with him in Infinity War um, he's he's Doctor Strange no problem he's I'd love that I'd love to see him come back and give us more of that uh, there was too much running in the first Doctor Strange yeah. that was uh, <laughs> it was yeah. just too much running. Marathon uh, Strange yeah totally yeah, yeah I know I know yeah I understand you know, he's a doctor so you've got to stay healthy but you know He's got a levitation cloak. <laughs> he can teleport. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, John, before we return you to the wilds of the UK, do you have anything else you'd like to tease about Dead Rabbit or anything else you'd like to plug? Uh, well, I'm not. The only other thing I'm working on um, is that I'm teaching a comic course at the moment in the UK. Um, a bunch of students uh, who I'm just helping trying to get ready to get break into the comic industry. And I guess at the moment they're kickstartering uh, their comic. Uh, it's called Off the Mark. And if you look up Off the Mark on Kickstarter, they're trying to raise a couple of thousand pounds to uh, self-publish their own book, anthology book. Uh, so it'd be great if anybody out there who's listening and wants to support new Town wants to check a couple of dollars their way to get them to get the book out. That would be brilliant. Um, and I guess with Dead Rabbit, uh, it's an ongoing series. Jerry and I are committed to it to hopefully get. Well, we've talked about doing sixty issues. Um, however, <laughs> I can feel my back and hand hurting just saying that. But I. We'll see how that goes. Um, I, I really hope so. I would like to do. Since Hitman, I really haven't done anything um, of you know of, of decent substance. Uh, you know, it's been a mini series here or ten issues there. But I would really like to do something that has a good at least thirty issues to it. So, um, so that's that's the hope with. Um, Dead Rabbit, just to keep it rolling along. Jerry has no lack of ideas for it, um, and um, you know he, he he's told me some of the stuff that's coming up, and it's really got me excited to uh, to get keep going with it. But uh, <laughs> just as long as I don't collapse in a sort of heat, that uh, that'll be all fine. Yeah, but that, that's it. Uh, I did two two pages of a Harley Quinn story recently, I suppose. Yeah, that was, uh, I don't know when that's out, but uh, it was two pages of a story by Sam Humphreys, the guy who does, who's doing Blackbird for Image as well, which is a great looking book, by the way. But Sam sent me the first issue, and um, him and Jan Bartel are doing a lovely job. And that comes out the same day that Ted Rabbit does, so I, I feel I should plug it here alongside. So, um, yeah, look out for that one as well. It's a cracker. Oh, it's so, gorgeous, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, 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 no fingers to be broken there. <laughs> you've got the, well, yeah, balance it out. You've got the kind of like neon, you've got the neon blackbird, and then you've kind of got the grim, gritty, shadowy, atmospheric dead rabbit. So it's... Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Get one of each flavor. You're fine. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You're Neapolitan. Yeah. There you go. 
we got to find a third to put somewhere in there. I don't know. What, what else is coming? <laughs> what else is coming out from Image? Oh, probably another sort of 10 books that day. I don't know. <laughs> I think Juke <laughs> Joint. I think I want to say Juke Joint by, uh, yeah, I think Juke Joint by Letha Franklin, or Letha Martinez and, and T. Franklin comes out that day too, which is like... Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so you've got a lot of stuff coming out. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen uh, stuff for that. Yeah, it looks good too. Yeah. Yeah, that, <laughs> there are so many there are so many good books. The fact that I couldn't remember any of them doesn't mean that there aren't a whole heap of really great books out there <laughs> uh, drawn by just so many ridiculously talented people. Uh, I mean, that um, a book that you said Ribbick's doing at the moment for... Her image is just amazing looking. Oh, verses, yeah. Verses, yeah, yeah. That's, that's just. But then he says it's mm. so talented, but it just makes me sick. <laughs> you know, I want to hurt him in many ways, except that he's giant and scary. So I can't beat him. I'm just like, <laughs> can I buy you a drink, he said. <laughs> you know, he's not. Isn't that Easter? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I haven't. I, maybe in passing, I've met. I've certainly uh, mm. hung out with Yvonne, but I've never. I don't know. I, 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 I've never sat down with the, with his. Uh... Yeah, well, you should do. You should try and get out. Oh, God knows if he said those podcasts. You know, he's, I, don't, I don't know if that's quite his cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. He's got, he's got some great stories. He said, "Is a funny, a funny fucker." If you're part of that. <laughs> but again yeah, anyway. <laughs> anyway the important thing of course is that dead rabbit is out in comic book store oh yeah I forgot about that. <laughs> on wednesday october 3rd john thanks well, again for coming at least, at least somebody remembers when it's coming out <laughs> good man <night> yourself Sam. <laughs> of course of course and of course you can see you can catch jerry and and jerry and john at new york comic-con that first week yeah, in october yeah. Yes, that's right. It's some table to be mentioned when I remember. Yes, it'd be lovely if you called by and say, yes, yes, yeah. we'll be signing stuff and talking unmitigated crap all day. So. <laughs> and, John, thanks again for coming back on. <laughs> pleasure, Sam. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. And, uh, you know, next time I come on, maybe I'll get a word of sense. Um, Always good talking to John. Uh, you know his new book, uh, Dead Rabbit, uh, with the, which he does with Jerry Duggan, out on uh, October third, which we think is damn good. It's fucking great. It's mm. f- so fucking good. Um, so I think the big elephant or whatever large pachyderm in the room is that. What do you guys think of Henry Cavill potentially not being Superman anymore? That would bug me out. Yeah, he's uh, he's been pretty good. So far, uh, I would say that he has consistently exceeded the material he's given. Yeah, I'll give you that. That the 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 little like gling in his eye that uh, Jake keeps talking about uh, while he's uh, following Flash. Do I talk about that? <laughs> I feel like you do. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> don't don't you don't you talk about the the in 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 uh, Justice League when he's first resurrected? There's that all the glings bit. There's that bit where they're all fighting him, and Flash is like, oh, "I'm so fast." And then Superman turns his head, and he's like, "Oh, he's faster!" Oh yeah, well, I mean that's yeah, yeah, everyone knows about that. Um, <laughs> but I mean, everyone that's seen the I'll movie, take, I, I'll take credit for all of it though. Um, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, all of it. I uh, I mean no, I've 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 liked the look of Cavill, and I've liked his his uh, his physique, and I've liked his uh, you know, like Sam was saying, like he was given stuff that necessarily was sometimes wasn't the best, but he always found a way to have moments. And Justice League, I think, is a bummer because like Justice League is like he really was having fun with it. Like yeah. he was allowed yeah. to just just really have fun. And uh, that's my favorite Henry Cavill Superman performance, and, right? And I don't, uh, I don't want to see him go yet. And I don't, I don't think he's done yet. <laughs> I don't either. Um, you know, he just posted a video on his Instagram where he's like not done (laughs) where he's like wearing like he's wearing like a krypton shirt and he's got like a superman action figure it's probably just like posturing right what's funny because like everyone like i don't think anything was confirmed and then like the only person who didn't say yes or no was henry cavill yeah Um, wasn't wasn't there a recent thing with uh just his cameo in shazam like not being able to. There was something I heard about like that was where the that's probably yeah. that's probably all it is. It's like oh he he's not gonna be in Shazam. 
Does that mean he's quitting Superman? Let's write an article about it right now before we fact check. Yeah, that's kind of how it is nowadays. So yeah, uh, he's getting that Witcher money. Yeah, I hope he's not done. You know, I, I still like him a lot. We'll and just I, digitally remove his entire beard this and time. It's, it, <laughs> It'll and look it's, better. And it's about time to give the f- damn man like you know a great Superman movie. You know, yes. Let him have that moment, and and, and I, he could totally deliver it. You know, I think he still uh, definitely has that. Uh, I do like that the last thing that we see, not counting the Flash Superman race of Cavill Superman, at least to date, is the uh, fucking shirt, shirt rip. rip. Yeah, finally. I was waiting for that to be a post credit scene in uh, Man of Steel. I sat around like a dickhead in the theater <laughs> waiting for that shit to happen. Or just a post credit scene in general. But just tear um, your shirt open. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to have the shirt on. I didn't say shirt rip with the Superman S under it, just shirt rip. <laughs> yeah. Um it just happened to be oh yeah, that's right, he's Superman. Jake doesn't care what's underneath. He no. just wants that tear. Yeah. He wants buttons to go picking. That's right. Uh, that's why he, that's why he watches these movies in three D. Yeah, that's right. Uh no, I, I uh I'll be sad when, you know, like when Daniel Craig's done, you know, I'll be bummed too. But uh uh I, I, I don't think we've seen the last of Henry Cavill's Superman. I no. hope not. And oh, no. he's he's really great with social media and like you know a sense of humor and stuff. So that little like uh, video he posted, I, I don't I don't think he's I don't think he's done. A lot of people are speculating, even though we're talking about speculating being stupid, that um, <laughs> this is a he. he we really, don't, I don't think people come to us for our journalistic integrity. Well, people don't come to us in general. But I uh, <laughs> oh, I uh, um, <laughs> um, actually it's all about journalism. Oh, integrity. Don't, don't <laughs> yeah. you do it. Yeah. Don't you do it. Uh, don't you damn do it. But uh, <laughs> that he wants to get Man of Steel 2 made. That that's kind of, this is his kind of power play for it. Yeah. Which I'm all for, man. Give me Man of Steel 2. Yeah. Matthew Vaughn, Man of Steel 2, Henry Cavill. Yeah. The end. Um, shit, I'll take a George Miller Man of Steel 2. I'll take, yeah, just give me Man of Steel 2. Yeah. Stop making fucking the granddaddy of them all a supporting character in these movies. Yeah. Like Batman didn't work, was, didn't work for Batman. Well, Batman v Superman should have like that that was just, you know, well, well we can get it all. I don't want to get into all that crap. Um it, mm. there should have been Man of Steel too, but it wasn't. Yeah. Because they were like, Oh, we need to pedal to the metal. Um what is your favorite Henry Cavill Superman moment? Just Oh just, shit. <laughs> fuck. Let me well let me well, let, when let me, the flash is running back. I told you <laughs> the twinkle in his eye. Dwing. Um well I'll give you I'll give you one I'll I'll try to think of one in each movie real quick. Oh, uh oh. because in in uh oh, fuck, see now I'm gonna nerd out and give you like a million. Um in the first in, in Man of Steel in the first Man of Steel. In Man of Steel, I'll give you two moments. Oh shit. I'm gonna break my own rules already. Uh the first being when he uh I I, I overanalyzed this on my Instagram page once. Where he's sitting there with Lois in the um, the uh, being News questioned, room? oh, being the, questioned, yeah. and uh, he's got the handcuffs on, mm. and the fact that he let them, he let himself be handcuffed, is a great Superman moment. But it's when he stands up and it just his, he just, you know, when you stand up, your arms just swing to your side and the cuffs break. Yeah, and it's while he's while he's saying, "You don't have anything to fear." Um, but for for real, it's uh, I I really enjoy. Um, Fuck! Now I'm thinking of everything, dude. I the the uh, the moment where he the think you can threaten my mother is one of the like. Even though it ends with him like killing everyone in a gas station, but you know I don't give a fuck. And an uh, IHOP. Yeah, who fucking cares? <laughs> um, fuck them all. Uh, let him be a murderous son of a bitch. <laughs> Work no. for Batman. Yeah, kind. Of. Oh, I I I don't. Yeah, I know you, you love you know like how I feel killer about Batman. That. Just fucking let him kill everybody. Fuck them. Uh, strike fear in the heart of man, baby. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, it is, yeah, the thing you can threaten my mother, like, that's just a nice moment. But um, also, yeah, the end, where, like, he's, I, I read somewhere, like, it, someone much smarter than me was like, oh, his little tie is floating in the wind. Uh, he's riding, like, his Superman cape, you know, when he, and he gets the Metropolis, and he's putting on his thing, and right as the doors are closing, he, puts, he starts to put his glasses on, and the, that last line, Justice League is a great last line, too, you know, the uh, but a Man of Steel being, you know, yeah. welcome to the planet. You know, is it happy to be here? Glad to be here. Yeah, I was like, oh fuck, happy to be here, Lois. Uh, Batman v Superman. He doesn't get a lot to work with. Um, I like the moment when he rescues Lois from the falling building. That's a nice moment because he's always there for Lois. Yeah, just he just effortlessly glides right. And yeah, says, hey, I'm here. Um, oh no, fuck! What am I talking about? I know what my favorite ma- Superman moment is, without a doubt. Easy, fuck them all. Is uh, is when he flies into the um, the Jimmy Jam Jam. And he screams because he has no idea. Oh, that, the world builder, yeah. That's the best moment, dude. That's the best moment. That's my favorite moment in the DC, uh, worlds of DC, cinematic, whatever, is because it's intercut with uh, Perry and two other the two other people yeah. whose names escape me. 
and um, there's that great moment between Quick side seats. Lo- yeah, Lawrence Fishburne and the and the woman, and he's trying his best to like get her out, and she's screaming and screaming, and Superman's being knocked down. It's intercut with this thing of him being knocked down. Weird tentacles, and, and yeah, the tentacles thing. That's the part's not great. He's like coughing, which is weird, but he's getting knocked <laughs> down. And then she's screaming, and Perry White's trying his best. And there's a great moment where they look at each other, and like they have this moment where I tried my best. Like without saying a word, they they both realize that's it. And all the cars around them are crushing and crushing and crushing, getting closer and closer. And Superman is just like literally. And it's a it's a they said it's a callback to the the Fleischer Superman and him punching the laser, which is like my favorite episode, the first episode. Um, he's just being beaten down, beaten down, beaten down, beaten down. And then he looks up, and they, that's the moment they always say there's like that Christopher Reeve looking moment. He just kind of, you know, looks like him a little bit, you know, because he's the way that his, his, you know, his face is being distorted by the wind or whatever. And then, like, all great Superman things, he flies into the unknown. Like, you know, we as an audience know that he's always going to be safe because we know what Superman does, but he is like him as a character. And I always say Superman Confidential, the, uh, is it Loeb Sale again? Uh, no, it's, it's Tim Sale, but it's not Jeff Loeb. It's, uh, fuck that's gonna bug me really bad um but uh the superman confidential and uh they they talk about that like he flies into a volcano he's like this could be the thing that finally kills me i don't know and so the moment of him flying into this and he's only been superman for like barely anything and he flies up into the void and lets out this great scream as he just is like well i know that at least i can sacrifice myself maybe i'll save a couple people and he flies in explosion and there's a great shot of him like getting like shot out the side of it and then the look of Perry and Lady. I'm sorry, I can't remember her name. Everyone thought it was like female Jimmy Olsen. Remember that when it first came out? Um, it's Johnny Olsen. And they, they look at each other and they're like, he's, you know, oh my God, oh my God. Um, and then it has a great shot after where he reaches out into the sun and clenches his fist or whatever, or opens his fist. Um, that's, yeah, that's my favorite thing. That is like, I get emotional every time I watch that shit. Um, but yeah, uh, Batman v Superman, Sam, you always pointed out the great moment where he saves. Lex Luthor from Doomsday. Yeah. Yeah. I got to look up. Did you talk about that for a second? I got to look up the confidential thing because that's going to bug the fuck out. Sure. Bug fuck. The, um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the moment in Batman versus Superman where I should have mentioned this in the CBR article I wrote today. Humble. Brag. I'm sure you'll have another time to, to mention it. One of, one of your other thousand articles. Yeah. Well, I had written an article called like Henry Cavill was always better than his movies and, or his Superman movies. Darwin Cook. Darwin Cook. Oh, I, in yeah. a in a writer role. Yeah. But um fantastic. Yeah, the uh the idea that even after like everything Lex Luthor has done to Superman, his first instinct is to block Doomsday's punch when he tries to kill Lex. Mm-hmm. No matter who it is, yeah. Superman's always going to save you. And I remember we were talking about it afterwards and we were like is that on purpose? Like, do you think they really, like, yeah. <laughs> and it was just like, we can't have Lex Luthor die. Uh, and maybe it was, whatever. But um, in that movie, I really love uh, the moment where it's such a tiny moment because I'm just, like, grasping for things where he hears about the um, kids being trapped in the flood and he turns and he loosens his tie. Or it's the fire in Mexico City. Fire in Mexico, and he, like, turns and loosens his tie. I was like, oh, it's a shirt wrap. But no, it's not. <sighs> and then uh, I really like, it was, the, I think, the second time I watched it. I saw it like three or four times in theaters um, was when he has the kryptonite spear and he's like, he says his goodbye to Lois. He's like, you're my world. Like that whole thing. And then again, him flying like fucking beat down. He's beating his ass kicked by doomsday. Wonder Woman's holding the fort down. Batman's watching from a mile away. And like it just, again, the final kind of push. Um, and then the look of shock, like, oh, that's through my heart, <laughs> which is a bummer, you know, I, they, whatever. But like, I, I, I enjoyed that the second time around, like seeing that moment. Um, and the Justice League, honestly, like a lot, most of his, like, especially he, when he's in the suit, I really enjoyed, you know, uh, you know, again, the we talk, picks up whenever he's on screen. Yeah. And, you know, of course the, the mustache thing, whatever stupid, but it is, it is stupid. And it's worth noting again that it's stupid. Um, and it's a bummer cause it ruined a really great performance from him. Um, not ruined it, it distracted. M- distracted thank you. Yeah. Because the movie starts with that great little cell phone footage with the kids. Um, Which is the bulk of the deleted mustache scenes. Well, I mean, that whole scene is deleted mustache, yeah. but there's whole sections where he's talking to his... Do you bleed? Do you bleed? Um, the, there's the epilogue, too. The epilogue, the, but also him with uh, in the field. Like talking oh, to yeah. Lois. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, you can deliver it better than I can. Which is the. Uh, yes, oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, th- th- there's some. Which is my favorite 
Superman, Superman moment in the DCEU. Yeah, period. fantastic. I mean that, that that is fucking fantastic. But I love um, they're just him fucking up Steppenwolf, mm-hmm. where he just like he's like this guy's still bothering you, and he like he flies in and just fucking bam, and then he like heat visions them, then picks them up, just tosses them like a little fucking asshole, and Two like things awesome. Why does a guy named Steppenwolf have fucking horns on his helmet? Mm-hmm. It's a goddamn wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Yeah, it's, uh, that's a mess. But you know, aliens. The, uh, the you know, wolf there's... might not mean a wolf <laughs> in his alien link. I yeah, I wasn't actually being literal yeah. with that question. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. It's a uh, you know. There's there's aliens. there's plenty of the, there's plenty to dig with the with the Cavill stuff. And like I said, I I don't think it's the the end of the road. I, it mostly wishful thinking too, because who knows? Um, you know, nowadays until you're sitting down watching it, never guarantees can be made. So, or you're going to, you know, it's, it's green letter or whatever. So yeah, there's plenty of good shit with, uh, with Cavill. And like I said, I hope to see more with him. Uh, and if not, if this is it, I hope it's because he just is going to be James Bond. So that's it. Not like he's coming back in the next mission impossible. Yeah. <laughs> It's killed. He gets killed more times than Sean Bean does in Goldeneye. Yeah, I think, I think three times basically. <laughs> well, I mean, he's he's clearly I dead s- the first time, but then there's like a second time I, and then a third time. I saw the movie a second time. I think I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. I still went Hoo! when he gets hooked. <laughs> it's huh. It is rough. Exit Just that stage one. down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, do you have any favorite Henry Cavill Superman moments you'd like to share with the rest yeah. of the class? You know, I was thinking about it. Um, while you guys were talking and nothing, nothing singular. singular, yeah, nothing singular really jumped out, especially beyond what you guys talked about. Like I can, I can definitely nod in agreeance that those were all good, good, good moments, but, uh, either I'm too far removed from all the, all of his performances or there was just nothing that was just like, ah! <laughs> you yeah, know, those, yeah, I'm still stuck in Christopher Reeveville. Mm. It's a good ville. It is. For the most part. It's good. It's a good, it's a good place, Mr. Luthor. It's good. Uh, I, pl- I got the new Spider-Man. Hell yeah. It I've only took, it only took me it. four days to play it. Oh, that's better than whatever the other game is, or just the PS4 in general. Both. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because it took me, what, like four months to play Batman, to play Arkham Knight? And it took me so four days. I've only put in like an hour, and I've only gotten through like the prologue. But it's mm-hmm. there are people that are like superhero games didn't exist before PS4 Spider Man. It's really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think it's like best game of best I've, superhero game of all time. Good. I've been watching Ken play it here and there because I hang out uh, with him a lot, uh, and uh, it looks really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I I I, I kind of wish I had a PS4 so I could play it. What suit does he prefer? Twenty ninety nine. Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> um, I w- I'm kind of partial to the punk rock Spider Man. Yeah, but, you know, mm. Spider Man just got like Spider Man does, in my opinion, uh, have the best games overall. Like, overall, yeah. 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 Um, you didn't like Superman sixty four. No, I spent my uh, weekend Superman rental system. on that bad boy when I uh, back it. in the day. I own it. Um, it doesn't mean you yeah. liked it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've established that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also true. Also true. Um yeah, there's no good Superman games. There is Well, there's mm, that's true. But like <laughs> there's uh there's th- I mean Injustice. The, had inju- Superman the in Injustice it. level in the, the the last level in Injustice was really cool Superman. Uh, like Lego Superman is pretty sweet like when they throw him on there i'm hoping they do a uh telltale superman that's the way you would do a superman game i would think mm-hmm. and there's a game it's terrible for the xbox called man of steel but it's the closest because there's a bunch of different outfits and once you get over the insanely ridiculous controls and get like used to like the worst controls ever it's not bad okay i mean it's bad but it's not bad like you're just like <laughs> you're, you're you're struggling for a superman game um grasping grasping at straws but like you're in space you're in you know earth you're on other planets, I think. It's it's it's, it's you know, there's yeah. moments. Yeah. There's at least four good Batman games. I would argue Batman on the NES and Batman Returns on the Super Nintendo slash Sega Genesis are also pretty good too. Mm. Um mm. I you know, and Batman begins on the GameCube. Oh yeah. Actually pretty solid. Fun good. Actually yeah. Batman's got a pretty good track record. Batman's dude. got a pretty good track record, but um, you know, until Arkham the Arkham series, 
you weren't, in my opinion, you weren't hitting on Shadow Dimensions good. You weren't hitting on Spider Man one or two good. You weren't hitting on what's cracking Spider Man. Um, you know, even Amazing Spider Man, the first Amazing Spider Man game was great. Uh, what else? Oh, Spider Man sixty four, like, Ultimate Spider Man, Ultimate Spider Man. Yeah, like those games are like the fucking shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Um, Back at you, buddy <laughs> boy. I punched the kingpin lots. Yeah. I, so there, I one of my it was like the perfectly timed screen cap of just me like laying into the kingpin, and he looks like it looks like I killed him. He's just mm. like, <laughs> like oh. I can't even like like quantify how mm-hmm. fucking how hard I rock that 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 motherfucker. If you could do a, uh, a it doesn't think there should be superhero, but comic book related video game what would you do and like what kind of genre like first person third person open world do you have an idea um i mean open world games are the way to go um you know i've played enough side scrolling beat em ups like x men the arcade game or mm-hmm. uh death and return of superman was a side scroller maximum carnage was a side scroller mm-hmm. batman returns i've so i'm good on side scrolling beat em ups uh first person the only first person and i know i'm probably going to there's only a handful of First person or superheroes that would benefit from the soup first person perspective, and I know mm-hmm. exactly who you're going to say. Well, that one would be sweet, but it wasn't my choice. Um, Punisher, Punisher, first person would be fucking. Uh, that, that's badass. the first one that yeah, I thought. Like of. just because that'd just be a, a first person shooter. First person shooter, <laughs> Punisher. But the game I would want to see is open world Judge Dread. But mm. you choose to be a citizen. Or you enroll in the academy. Oh, so it's like a Knights of the Old Republic. So kinda, either not, you're, the, well, well, I, I mean, I say it'd be, be better not to, be, to give you the option of being a citizen or a judge. Yeah, you'd be a judge, and you go the way of Rico, or you go the way of Joe. So yeah. like, it's like I DC Universe cool. Online. Yes, yeah. but <laughs> but good. Yeah. Well, I mean, like like it Got would him. be like, um, not that. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like the Mega City One that's apparently coming to Netflix. Is that going? Is that the TV show going to Netflix? That's the on. That's the. I think they Ongoing? shopped it to. Yeah, because I think they wrote. Um, they have like the script done and everything. Yeah, so, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I mean, yeah. I had a dream that or Dread the, is a supporting character. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with it. I had a dream where the first trailer came out, and it was like going through Mega City. It was like dun, 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 dun. and it was just like intercutting with judges like slamming fucking perps on cars and shit dun, 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 dun. and then there's like you know like shootouts and shit dun, 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 dun. and then the they're all like walking in the hall of law and they're like uh, and then like they turn the corner and then the fucking door opens and it's just dun, 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 and just dread walking and they're like oh fuck and then it just shuts and it's like mega city one now they probably wouldn't have the budget for it but how cool would it be if they had good old Sly guest star as like a, a, a with like the council chief judges yeah or the chief, chief judge judges. or yeah uh, I mean Judge Doom Judge well the funny <laughs> thing is like you could totally I mean yeah fuck yeah you could totally do that you could have him as like an old judge that that goes the way of the cursed earth mm. um you know they could do all kinds of crazy shit you can make him the fucking chief judge and like kind of looks like Stallone you know because yeah. like my thing is the the way you sell the role of dread isn't as like necessarily because a lot of people are like actors seem to be as- afraid of the comic book term mm. um maybe not maybe not as much nowadays which is a good thing but you sell it as like remember that show orphan black yeah i loved that show that's judge dread you could play like you can play an old version of joe you could play the the main version of joe you could play the younger version of joe you could play rico you could play all the different brothers um <laughs> but like you could have all of these like crazy performances you can do with it, um, and I think one of the ways you do it is you definitely do the the Rico Dread Joe Dread storyline. Like that's my favorite shit. That and then you introduce um, Rico's daughter Vienna, which is like Joe's only like connection to real emotion. When you say Joe, that is the Dredd. Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, that's okay. that's Judge Dread. Right. Yeah, just making sure. Yeah. I, that's what I assumed. Based on context, but mm-hmm. since Judge I am not as versed on dread, yeah, Joseph Dread, Joe, Judge Joe Dread, Judge Joe Dread, baby, mm. Joe Dread, yes. <laughs> um, something you'll that'll tickle you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we mentioned because uh, it's John McRae. Yeah, 
You mentioned we mentioned dread in the interview. We talked dread. Nice. I think I'm, I think way back when, which seems like forever Two years ago, ago. We, we talked about we talked a little about dread with him. Yeah, I got I even got to name drop Walter the robot. Oh, oh. yes, Walter the robot. Yeah. Merry Christmas, world. Yeah, Merry Christmas. And Judge Dredd's like, Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I think it was the IDW. I think it was IDW. Dread brought him back mm. in one of the books. I was like, Fuck yeah! Um, Just to kill him. <laughs> no, Walter the Robot. Maybe the, he definitely used to show up. I love Walter the Robot. Yeah. <laughs> um, whale. You gents got anything to? To uh, add? No, not really. You know, Chris, you, I, you've, uh, you've been busy. I, yeah, well, I've been working a lot. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I also, um, uh, just today, actually, uh, or the other day, uh, recently, I uh, I rented Ocean's Eight oh! to to finally check that out because I was I I I enjoy the Ocean's movies uh, and uh, I was mildly interested in this one because I like most of the cast. It was pretty good. <laughs> it was better than the better than the the Twelve. worst. <laughs> well, it was better than the worst oceans movie, which is to say, Logan Lucky. Oh uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, and and uh, I, yeah, I know. I, w- I would argue that it it was better than Twelve and Thirteen. Mm. Thirteen's got Pacino though. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and it's got Julie Roberts playing a woman who is not Julie Roberts, pretending to be Julie Roberts. To the point oh, where it's got Bruce Willis too, as himself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good old Bruno. Yeah, <laughs> he has returned. Hmm. No, I actually quite enjoy. I think like thirteen's right up there with eleven. Honestly, that's my I, hot take. You know, I, well, I I'm right up there with you. I actually enjoyed thir- I the oceans proper, uh, which is to say the the George Clooney oceans movies. Not, I mean, uh, even the even trilogy. even the Frank Sinatra uh, oceans eleven was pretty good. Uh, Although, you know, in my opinion, probably the the weakest just because I would agree it's old. Yeah. Uh, and it's just them like you could argue the new ones are, too. But it's yeah. just like it just the Rat Pack Ocean's yeah. Eleven just rides entirely on their charm. Yeah. I think had I been alive at the time of the Rat Pack and like a fan of the Rat Pack, then love it. Yeah. If I but, was alive in 1963. Yeah. But I'm so far removed from that time, you know, that it's just kind of like, oh, OK. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I enjoy all three of the, the, the Danny Ocean, uh, uh, you know, movies. Uh, yeah, I think 12 is probably the weakest of the three in my opinion as well. There's some enjoyable moments, but yeah, yeah it's the weakest of the, yeah. yeah. No, it doesn't have to be bad to be the weakest. Yes. Yes. I remember saying that once I was like, yeah, you know, like, you know, solo is by the time this episode drops, so will be out on like digital HD. And I was explaining, I was like, yeah, you know, like. I like the film, but but Solo I think is the weakest of the new generation Star Wars movie. And it's like someone literally couldn't understand that, even after yeah. I explained that. Like it's not a, it's not like I. There's a guy that I work with who loves Steven Spielberg, like thinks he's the greatest director of all time, and there there's an argument to be made there. Uh, but like, so, but we're always like you mentioned this, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, I, I, I think I mentioned it off mic to you guys, but now that it relates to something we're talking about, I'm gonna <laughs> go ahead and say it on mic. Uh, <laughs> Sprinkle it in, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, he. So, so we we like tease him because he's like got like blinders for Steven Spielberg, and we're like, oh, yeah, well, uh, what's a what's a bad movie that he's made? No, oh, he's never made a bad movie. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm like, really? You, you, Bridge of Spies, nineteen forty one. No, there, it's got great cinematography or whatever. That you know, like he always has. He has an excuse for like, oh well, this aspect of it was amazing. So therefore, Jeez. Steven Spielberg <laughs> is still amazing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> and so then I was like, okay, fine, fine. Not what is a bad Steven Spielberg movie, but in your opinion, what is the worst Steven Spielberg movie? And he's like, he's never made a bad movie. And I'm like, that's not what I asked you. Yeah. What is the worst? And he just again could not wrap his head around the idea that you can it can still be good but still be the worst like it can be the worst fragrance of <laughs> jasmine you know well i've you know and i've used this example like I've, i don't know if i've mentioned this i feel like i have on the show before but like when jake and i the first time we analyzed every single beatles album <laughs> the um the analyze of, this era yeah one not of our analyze that era one of our buddies was like all the song, all the tracks on Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band are equally good. And we get to the end of the album, 
and it's you know it's a day in the life and he's like this is my favorite track on a sergeant you know sergeant peppers and i'm like so this is this one's the one that like stands above the heap and he's like yeah it's like so what you're telling me is all the other tracks on sergeant peppers are your least favorite and you're just <laughs> like fuck you <laughs> how dare you bring logic yeah that's what i do <laughs> um but yeah, no, cool. Yeah, yeah. no. I, I've so been, Ocean's Eight gets a thumbs up. Been meaning to see it actually. Ah, thumbs up. Yeah, I enjoy the cast. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's on Redbox. That's where I saw it. Yeah. It's probably streaming somewhere. Yeah. Oh, no, it's been available for uh, weeks. I think. Yeah. Jake, you got anything going on? Hmm. No. No, not really. Cool. Yeah. Not going to any uh, concerts or anything. No. <laughs> okay. Sweet. So. Dead Rabbit out on Wednesday, October 3rd. Thanks again to John McCrae for coming back on the Sean, show. Sean. Back coming on the Sean. Back Shawn. on the Sean. Back on the Sean. That's our new oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah. Thanks again, John. <laughs> this has been another installment of Catching Up. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Chris. Thank you very much. Good night, Eric Bonner. This has been another Geek Out production. If you enjoyed what you heard, hey, you know, we've got a special episode every Friday. Of course, there's the usual Catching Up show every Wednesday. And you get book club episodes just about every Tuesday these days. Thanks for listening.